So in this example here, um, chapter six is all about interpreting graphs. So what you basically have to do is you have to look at the graph and try to figure out, well, what's happening in this graph? For example, the first one I have written here is a distance versus time graph. And these graphs are usually used in physics. Um, you'll see them a lot next year, grade 11 physics, if you take, uh, and in science as well. So from the time, we'll call this time zero, and we'll say this is time in seconds. From time zero to two seconds, what's happening is the object, whatever it happens to be, is traveling at a constant rate of speed. It's traveling at a constant rate because the graph is a straight line. So from zero to two, the object moves at a constant speed. From two, three, four, two to five, what do you think is happening there? From two, three, four, two, from two to five, what's happening there? Its distance isn't changing. It's not getting any more, it's not getting any further away. So therefore, since the time is increasing from two to five, the distance is not increasing, the object must be stopped. So from two to five, object is not moving. Right? The object is staying still. And from five to six, the object moves again But this time it's moving at a quicker speed because it takes less time for the object to move more distance. So it's going faster. Okay. So the object is moving again but faster. So interpreting a graph you have to be able to look at the graph and figure out what is happening. Um, there'll be clues on the side and on the bottom. That's what is going to be the description. And then you have to figure out from that description and from the picture and the slope of the lines what's happening. Next, another question you might have from this section, this is the last example, is it might say something like draw a graph of a ball bouncing with respect to time. So here I have height and time. And I need to think, okay, if I'm dropping a ball, say from a certain height, and I'm dropping it, as time goes further, now it's not just gonna go straight down, right? It's gonna actually have some curve because I have to show that as time moves, right? As time goes from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, my ball is also moving. And once it hits the ground, it's going to bounce back up to a certain height, come back down, bounce again, come back up, bounce again, and so on, until the ball comes to rest. So if I'm drawing a ball, a graph of a ball bouncing with respect to time, this would be a very accurate graph, right? I drop it from a certain height, it bounces, 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 and so on. And time is always moving, time never stops. If you have time along the bottom, you have to make sure that your graph is continually moving to the right because time does not stop. The only thing that stops is maybe the height when the ball comes to rest. But even when the ball is at rest, you would have a straight line along the axis. Because time still moves, it's just that the ball isn't moving, right? So be very careful with that. And hopefully that should get you through. There's a lot of good examples you can read in the book as well. Um, I would recommend going through page 268, 269, all those examples, uh, especially 271, and then going on to your uh, assignment.